Dr. Mark Changizi here with your Science Moment. Since the hysteria happened back in March of 2020, a lot of the kinds of research directions that I have been working on over the last 10 years, which concern emotional expressions, why animals have them, what they mean in terms of how the reputation mechanisms happen amongst people, well, a lot of this leads naturally into different sorts of questions and frameworks for trying to understand mass hysterias and social narratives and the kinds of reputation networks that happen amongst humans that can lead to these sorts of hysterias. But it also, as I'm working on this, it leads to some, some sometimes very pedestrian advice in terms of how to potentially insulate yourself from mass hysteria. And we talked about that in a recent uh, Science Moment video in, in terms of being aloof. But of course, we all are susceptible to hysterias, small, minor ones that might happen for this or that issue, or major ones that encompass the uh, Earth, uh, like COVID has. Um, and if you do get pulled in, there's other kinds of personal responsibilities or ways of thinking that potentially can help you be safer, help uh, the narratives and the different kinds of tribes being less uh, uh, destructive to society. And one simple principle along these lines is simply this. Don't anthropomorphize the opposition. Don't anthropomorphize the opposition. That means don't treat the opposition, the entire group, as a human. Now, at first glance, that might sound bad. Of course, you want to treat your opponents as humans. This is one of the big problems in, in terms of the acrimony of, of debate, is that you're not treating your opponents as humans. You treat them as less than human. You treat them as unclean or as racists or, some, or witches you know, or infectious, even worse, which is sort of the kind of thing that we've talked about before. That is bad. You want to treat them as humans. But I said, don't anthropomorphize the opposition. The opposition isn't one individual. It's a massive, large group, a movement. It has a social narrative and reputation hierarchies within it. There's, it's a complex entity. Movements are very different than the individuals. And movements can have intent, even without individuals within it having intent. Like the Ouija board we talked about before, four of us can be playing the Ouija board, and the entire system of our hands can lead to intentful behavior that none of us, in fact, is designing. Now, the reason that you don't want to impute human identity to the whole is because when you do see intentful actions, and you, you'll start to treat individuals within it as primarily responsible for that, rather than saying, oh no, this is a consequence of the Ouija board-like behavior of large groups. No, once you blame the intent on the opposition, your brain is going to then blame it on individuals or small groups of influential individuals within it. And that's not what's happening at all. When you start to see the opposition as intentful, and it can sometimes seem to have intent, and seem to have design, you immediately blame individuals and they'll become evil, rather than the opposition per se being against your interests and potentially evil. In fact, when evil happens in the world, it's usually like that. It's the entity at the whole that is doing evil things, rarely with any individual pur purpose purposefully doing it. Real evil, in the terms of the everyday sense, is when Ted Bundy is a you know, serial killer, that kind of evil. Well, this is not like that. The societal level evils that occur aren't like that. The societal level evils are because of these mass movements and madness of crowds for which even the dictator is rarely uh, uh, pulling the strings. The dictator is, of course, disproportionately responsible, but is much less in control than anybody tends to realize. Treat the opposition as a massive Ouija board, and it may be doing things that you might consider evil, but don't anthropomorphize it and think of it as an evil entity per se, because then you'll just start thinking of your opponents as evil, and there's nothing good down that road. And that was your science moment.